I've got some really interesting cases for you today, guys. My name is Reese Barber. I'm one of the audiologists here at Audiology Associates. Make sure you stay tuned for the second patient. This compilation is a really interesting one. Uh, now, as you noticed, I'm not on the screen today, and that's because I'm trying to get this recorded very quickly in between two of my patients. Uh, so apologize for that, but uh, fingers crossed we'll be back on the screen again soon. So with this patient here, you can see we've got this really thick, sticky plug of wax and they're quite big old plugs in these in this ear canal as well they're kind of bound together with a little bit of hair and that's just giving this plug a little bit more structure so what i'm trying to do is lift this off the canal and we can see this very very soft wax here at the entrance patients have been really good and used some olive oil before they've come along but what we can see now is this is pretty much filling the canal and because the plug is quite long it's actually formed into the s shape as well of the ear canal so as i'm trying to pull this down the piece that's wrapped around the second bend in the canal is holding this in place but i've got the standard size ulna tube in here i'm just lifting now from the canal wall just trying to maneuver this out uh, so we're giving this a little bit of a wiggle you can see this is tough old stuff and you can really make out all those individual hairs that are, are running the whole way through this wax plug. Now that's probably there because the patient, some, I would imagine, has done a little bit of ear hair trimming and those thicker, coarser hairs, not those very, very fine hairs that everyone has, but these are the more thicker, coarser hairs on the outer portion of the ear canal. Some of those have gone back in and the wax has done its job. It's picked them all up, but unfortunately it's bound that wax plug together then. So we are not got quite got enough suction power to bring this out. So we're going to switch to a manual tool. So this is the Jobson horn, this little uh, round ring shaped uh, tool that we're using here. It's great for these tougher plugs. We've dropped just down behind it and we're going to draw this out. Now look at the size of this plug and I want you to bear in mind this is only the first half of the plug. So we can see it's a good size piece there. It's, it's a pretty chunky old plug that's come away. But when you take a look beyond you can see that there's still a lot of wax sitting further in and it goes a fair way. It looks like a little tiny porcupine in there, a little hedgehog. Uh, lots of these little hairs all jutting out in different directions. Now the reason I've switched back to the standard size on the tube rather than carry on with the Jobson horn is because it's that little bit deeper. I always find it safer to bring these plugs forwards uh, rather than, you know, if they're very, very deep, rather than going in with curatage. Uh, but you can see this is the second half of that plug. Look at the size of this massive, all those bits of hair um, all kind of wrapped around that plug as well. There's the eardrum looking lovely and healthy. Uh, and there we go. We can see a very similar issue on this other side here as well. So we're just going to give this a little bit of a lift, try and get this beginning section of the plug. Guys, we have a lovely case of surface ear and it is quite an extreme case as well. So uh, for the second patient, now it's not actually my patient, it's Taylor's, but he's in our Cardiff branch today, so he can't voice over his bit. So I'm voicing over his bit for him as well. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. And also make sure you stay tuned for the ruler shot of this patient as well, because there's a fair old amount in there. So we're just moving this plug around. There we are, drawing it down to the, the bottom, uh, drawing it to the bottom, excuse me, drawing it down to the entrance of the canal, the bottom of the canal. Uh, so we're bringing this down the canal. There we go. Let's give this a little bit of wiggle. You can see I'm almost rolling it or trying to turn this plug at the moment, but those hairs are binding this so well together here. There we go. Let's give this a little bit more of a wiggle and that's going to detach this whole front section. There we go, that's come away. And then we can concentrate down on that sort of flatter section beyond. You do tend to tend to work on the bits that are jutting out the most, uh, you know, first, just because it's a more uneven surface to try and get a suction grip on. So if you can really get a grip on those pieces and pull those out first, you leave yourself with a much flatter surface to work on with the wax. Uh, now we just need to pull up from the bottom of the canal here. Let's detach this off the canal. There we go, lifting this up again. Um, somebody pointed out the comments, you know, I, I read one this morning when I came into work and they were saying that you, you seem to be pointing out the obvious. Uh, you know, we can see you've switched to different tools. Like why tell us you're using a St. Bartok if we can see you're using a St. Bartok? Um, the reason I do that is because you guys have, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you have a really good understanding of the tools that we use, the techniques that we use, because we've voiced them over and you've seen it so many times. 
Um, the reason I do that is because there are going to be people who this is maybe their first EU Action World War video they've ever seen. So for them, it really helps them to feel involved and to understand what's going on rather than me just assume that everyone knows what a St. Bartok is and everyone knows what a Zolna tube is. Um, that's the reason we, uh, we put those bits and pieces in. So uh, we've managed to pull this forward slightly. I'm going to get behind this centre section of this plug. Now watch this because it comes away. This reminds me a little bit of like a, a, a bone shape, this one. Uh, but as this comes away, you'll see it's got these two very wide ends on it, which is what was pull, stopping it from getting pulled out with the suction tube. Uh, let's have a go. You can see that kind of almost looks like a, a like a cartoon dog bone, I suppose. But you can see it's coming away really, really well. A little bit broken off at the back. So out this is going to come as well. We're almost to our second patient, the compilation, that exostosis patient, which is really interesting. I, I, I think that was a really good video to watch. Looks lovely and healthy. Both ear canals looking good. Four and a half centimeters just over. Uh, I'm going to go with 13 sixteenths <laughs> of oh, an inch on that one, guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, lots and lots and lots of plugs coming out of that particular ear canal. Now this, when you first glance, when I first looked at this video, I thought, oh, this is a wet, squishy wax, wax plug. But... When you start to lift this up, what you'll see is this isn't wax at all. This is all mostly skin. Now, there might be a little bit of a, 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 a nugget of harder wax in the middle of this skin. But this is mostly a ring of dead skin around the outside portion of the ear canal here. Now, we don't know at this point that this is actually a case of surface ear. Now, if you've never heard the term surface ear before, now there are two terms which I find become really interchangeable a lot. There's surface ear and there's swimmer's ear. Now surface ear, which is what this particular patient has, uh, is where the ear canal uh, starts to lay down more bone underneath the skin. Okay, so it's benign bone sort of uh, growth or, or laying down a lot more benign bone underneath the skin there. So you end up with these really bony lumps in the ear canal and they're called exostoses. Now, sometimes you'll get them, well, most of the time they, they appear in threes. Um, when it's a more advanced case, that's not always the case, and you'll see that now. Now, nobody really knows the, the reason it happens. The most uh, sort of prevalent theory is because uh, when you get exposure to cold water, they used to think it was, but now they understand it's exposure to any water. As it evaporates off the skin, it has a cooling effect, and that's what forces the, 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 to, the, the body to lay down this, this sort of benign bone. Now, um, it can be problematic if they start to touch or if you get uh, things like wax skin beyond the exostoses, that can be a bit of an issue. So Taylor here is actually using the Rosen inserter now. We've just gone around the outside edge, couldn't budge it, but the Rosen inserter in the center. Now look at this as it pulls forwards. There we go, just start to see it did shift forward slightly. So he's trying to get over the top now. Now this is really difficult to do this bit because you've got to get the very thin end of this Rosen inserter, this little pointy tool we've got here with a bend on it. You've got to get that between the wax and the canal wall without touching the canal wall, which is really, really tough old thing to do. Uh, and you can see as he's trying to fold almost the top section down a little bit here, uh, but even the Rosen inserter is just a little bit too thick uh, to get into that space uh, effectively. So he's just moving position a little bit, going around. Oh, I told you those two terms were interchangeable. Sorry, guys. My brain's on a bit of a scat again approach today. Um, Swimmer's ear. Now, I personally would say surfer's ear is exostoses. Swimmer's ear is people who get repeated infections following exposure to water. That's what I would say, or irritation in the ear following uh, exposure to water. But I have heard the two terms very interchangeably used, whether you're northern or southern hemisphere, uh, as to what. So, so whether you're a prevalent surfer uh, area, then you're more likely to call it surfer's ear. But if not, we call it swimmer's ear in the northern hemisphere. So out that's come. You can see this really uh, thick plug with that skin around it. But look at those exostoses, guys. I've just stopped the video so you can see it. Those lumps and bumps all the way around the ear canal there. And you could see how this would become problematic if those start to touch or if you get any debris forming on the other side of the exostoses. That's when it can become a problem just because it's really difficult to get the, the tools beyond them then to remove that effectively. And you wouldn't really want to use water in there because you're going to get a lot of water trapped behind those exostoses as well. So this is the other ear canal. Now, we, we obviously, we know now the patient has these. So we're kind of expecting to see it on this side as well uh, because, you know, if you've got it on one side, chances are you don't wear an earplug on one side when you go swimming and not the other. So the chances are it's going to be on this side as well. But we've got the Rosen inserter in here again. 
there we go let's give this a little bit of a shove there we go round that bend out this is starting to come now i'd be really interested to see what the ear canal looks like beyond this uh, because the the first side they were they were pretty substantial exostoses i'll give you a heads up this side's actually worse you can see uh much much bigger exostoses on this side as well e-x-o-s-t-o-s-e-s -O -O -E exostoses okay just in case you're wondering what i'm saying so i know i know that the subtitle thing doesn't always work but look at these and you can see there's not much of a gap there at all we've got some really prominent exostoses there um now I, I, ooh, let me just do the measurement and my brain will be on track so half an inch one and a half centimeters there guys um a lot of people are going to ask in the comments well oh, what do they do about it uh if they're not touching the answer is not a lot they will just actively monitor it they won't really do anything else with it um it's only really if they start to touch then that becomes a problem and that's when you'd have it they, they would probably actually go in and shave the bone they'd sort of open the canal up a little bit for that well guys um fingers crossed i will be back on your screens again soon um but as always take care of yourselves take care of your ears and take care of one another and uh, i'll speak to you again soon bye everyone